All right, welcome everyone. This is the Doctor from uh, Gaming Not Guaranteed and General Streamer, and I'm here to give a first look at the new MOBA from uh, Bandai Namco. Is it Namco Bandai? I always forget. Anyways, their new MOBA. It's a sci-fi themed MOBA, and it's called Supernova. Uh, so, uh, some background on me. I have a lot of history with MOBAs. I started playing Heroes of New Earth back when it was in beta before League of Legends was even really announced. Ended up uh, playing probably a couple thousand hours of that before all my friends ditched, went to League of Legends. Moved to that with them because playing MOBAs alone is probably the most painful experience in gaming. And then after that, uh, played LoL for about a year and a half, another couple thousand hours into that, switched to Dota, and since then, got kind of burned out on the, the AAA big super MOBAs and have been jumping around making sure I get uh, you know a few hours in for every of the MOBAs that come out. I like to stay up to date on them. Uh, I played a lot of Dawngate. That was great. Rest in peace. Um, thank you Waystone for that one. Strife, uh, the s sort of casual Heroes of North sequel thing that, that the makers of of Han have made, played a bunch of that. Uh, tried out Smite when it was very first coming out. Uh, that one seemed interesting, and it seems like it's gotten a lot more popular. Uh, and even some of the more subtle, you know, adaptations of MOBAs that weren't really true to the mold, like Bloodline Champions, uh, was really cool. And um, I'm trying to think of any other, any other particularly interesting one. Uh, Realm of the Immortals, I think it was, or was Rise of the Immortals. There was this very brief period where there was a really uh, poorly developed one that the makers of the game hosted a tournament and I actually uh, built a team and we participated in that tournament. I think we came in third. Maybe. That was a weird game. Very uh, badly balanced. But it had some cool ideas. Uh, and so now here we are to Supernova. Oh, of course Heroes of the Storm. Um, I've been in the alpha for that for a while and uh, have played a lot of that. And so now we're at Supernova. Uh, so, what makes this MOBA different? Uh, most importantly, the, the difference between this one is you, instead of focusing on a lot of items and, and uh, that sort of thing, the, the big mechanic that I think changes this gameplay is the creep waves. In Supernova, you s determine the creeps that are sent down your lane. Uh, when you start off a game and pick a lane, you pick during the character selection and you will find that you are matched against an opponent and so your creeps will be going down that lane against the opponent. There is still the the 2-1-2 two, two setup of uh, two people assumed to go top and bottom and one at mid, so the middle lane is a very one-on-one -on -one competition whereas the top and bottom lane are collections of units. Um, but that is where your resources go that you earn from both killing and from sending minions and I will you know get more into that later but that is the, the big difference other than that it works a lot alike you still have the four abilities you level up the same kind of way uh, you can jungle there's a handful of other things the map will seem really familiar to any standard three lane MOBA player um, though you know it's it's I think it's tilted on its axis a bit um, and that's that so far a really amazing amount of polish has gone into this game. Um, I am particularly impressed with the level of graphics and the overall balance seems solid for a start. There are some heroes that are definitely better and there are some heroes that are worse. Um, but we, I, I haven't, nothing has stood out as glaringly bad yet. So for an alpha, that's, that's generally solid. I know that's not much to say about, you know, something that's been out for a long time. So, uh, I want to go through a couple of the mechanics and stuff in the pre-game, sort of the metagame of the game, and then I will hopefully jump into a match. Uh, one of the issues of an alpha means that there are not a whole lot of players, and so the queue times are horrendous right now, uh, which is probably my biggest complaint about the game. Uh, and again, that's, that's a positive, right? Because if my biggest complaint is that there aren't enough people playing it yet, that's something that will be remedied as they invite people. That isn't a, 
that isn't a problem that requires dev hours and a budget in order to fix. So, so to go through some things, um, you have your, your heroes. They are uh, pretty diverse. Um, they're all sci-fi themed and they come with nice little windows here where you can look at them and look at their skins and go through all their abilities. Um, it, it's familiar to the more polished MOBAs. Again, pretty surprising for a, a brand new MOBA that has come out. And you see here the UI is nice and responsive. It, it gives you, you know, separate categories for stats. You can hover over the specific stats and see kind of what these things do. Um, you know, energy is like mana, and it explains that there. Uh, attack speed, I mean, most of it is self-explanatory, but you get a lot of information just by sort of uh, hovering over and reading stuff. Um, it separates all the heroes into categories of melee and ranged, and then gives them any number of these subcategories, I guess you'd call them, um, that there seems to be a pretty solid uh, set of combinations. So, you know, normally in a lot of the other MOBAs, it's hard to say where you put things because a lot of the categories are exclusive. You usually have assassins or casters, or, you know, there's support, or they're a tank, but then there's support tanks, and what, you know, where how do you categorize them? Um, Supernova tends to categorize them by just adding them both on at once. This is a brawler assassin, kind of counterintuitive, but easily one of my favorite heroes. He's a robot ninja, well, sorry, robot samurai. I feel like like a plebeian for calling a samurai ninja, but anyways, um, very cool looking dude. Again, look at the, the quality of the graphics and the design in this character is just top notch for a game so early in development. Um, but anyways, you know, he's a brawler and an assassin. You have brawler tanks, caster assassins, uh, pure brawlers with some other interesting ones, uh, pure casters, tank support, is, is a fun one that you don't see it. Or Tank Caster. I mean, it explains these pretty well, too, that Caster is focuses on dealing damage with its abilities. It doesn't have to be a mage in the traditional sense that LOL tends to, to you know, cordon things in. Um, sniper is their term for a carry. Uh, but I have found that, that Brawlers and, and Assassins are as able to carry in this game. So those are the commanders. Um, I, I could go through some of them, uh, but I, I can suffice to say that they are pretty well designed and, and creative so far. None of them feel like clones of anything I've seen elsewhere. Um, and they have a good balance of, of power versus interestingness in, in their design and in their abilities and in their styles. Um, so there are a handful of, you know, this is just your standard ranged carry and, and it's boring. It just kind of has a set of normal abilities and then you have something like my you know favorite robo samurai and this guy has a whole bunch of dps abilities but then his ult which he starts off with lets him fly up into the sky and be invulnerable and then all of his abilities have a different effect when doing them from the air um, so very complicated a higher skill cap sort of and but a lot of rewarding gameplay it feels really cool to play as some of these heroes now Something I, I almost missed that's really impressive here, if you go into any of the heroes pages, their abilities show here a set of, of ca like categories, I guess keywords is sort of the word, um, that let you know at a glance what they do without you having to read the entire description and see all the numbers. Um, area damage and relocation, damage relocation and slow. Uh, if you go to this commander you'll see this one's just a damage skill this one's area damage and slow you know immediately at a glance what these are going to do and it helps you learn some of the basics right away uh, which is really cool now next there are uh, alliance abilities um, which are essentially your summoner spells and uh, what's cool about these is you get three and you can only choose one from each category so you will be able to have a little more balance in this from the lol uh, summoner spells by forcing you to choose, you know, either this, which is effectively ghost plus some attack speed, or flash, uh, called displacement in this game. Um, they also have a handful of other cool ones that you, I haven't seen in any of the MOBAs, including Dawn Gate, which so far has had the largest array of of summoner spells. Here we have uh, one that reduces movement and attack speed in an area. You have this that just a big nuke from the sky. Um, and 
this one's a particularly cool, you sort of draw a line and it lasers the ground in that area. Um, so there's a lot of cool things. And um, the the categories really helps them be balanced. You know, you you can't you can't just go flash and and ghost and then run around and be a pure mobility one. Also, they have a couple of economy ones that are passive, but really help for balancing the the needs of the carries versus the needs of the gankers. Um, like this, which gives you resource for each and nearby enemy killed. Resource being the uh, the res and you know, and looking at it, resource is not their best word choice, but resource is the resource that is used to buy creeps. Um, but we'll see that when I get into game. Uh, and then exploit gives you additional resources when you level up. So those will help you build up your, your creep waves, um, which is, is certainly a big part of the game. Um, your success as a commander, so far in my experience, seems to outweigh that, but the creep waves are... <laughs> still a huge part of how you put pressure on your enemies and can allow you to do things like split push without you actually having to be there then there are accessories uh, which are as best as I can say they are League of Legends runes these are passive abilities that give you upgrades in combat you start off with all of these stats applied um, and they do a whole bunch of things uh, like you know health armor damage um, and then some more advanced stuff like kills and assists can increase movement speed. Um, what you see here is there are three tiers of these. And the best way I can equate this is to think of tier one being, uh, or the tiers being the same as the runes in, in, in League. There are low level ones, and these provide a very small bonus, like three weapon damage. Um, then there's the two that provides slightly larger bonus, and three provides a pretty big bonus relative to the, the first tier. Um, but what's different is you have to have three of each and then a special of each. Specials having just kind of very different effects. Um, so, so far you start off with all of these unlocked. I imagine these are things you have to unlock as you play. Um, but a lot of the monetization and the, the out of game progression is, is set to maximum in this alpha. So keep in mind that one of the ways that they might be able to completely cripple this game is to have just a, a mindless grind in order to get anything worth being competitive. So I, I am very optimistic right now at the core module, uh, but the way that they hand it to you in the game could have a huge impact on the overall quality of this game. Um, and then finally, so there are these two armies that you can pick from, um, this human and the cyborg. They generally affect a little bit of the strategy for the creeps. Um, they are not each side of the map. Uh, as far as I can tell, you they kind of mix and match. Like a, a given side can have some of both. Um, but I haven't been able to assess that 100%. It's kind of confusing. Um, additionally, each faction, you can create armies that will work again like rune pages or something. Where you can choose which, I think it's 9 or 10 units you have available to even buy as creeps um, but that is not a feature right now uh, you can see in the character selection that it's hinted at um, and other than that uh, that's that's the out of game um, and so now I'm not gonna waste time waiting for a normal match I'm gonna join into a solo against AI so you can kinda see how this game works so let's do that All right, so again, really, really awesome uh, loading screens. These are, you can see all your characters, um, you can choose armies, and if you select any of these categories, uh, it'll give you a lot more information. So here's where you see that I have three armies that involve different sets of enemy, or different sets of creeps. And I, right now these are preset. I imagine that these are custom chosen eventually. But right now they seem to have a variety of different effects um, but I haven't had a lot of time to look into them because one problem with this alpha is this is the only screen in which they show that uh, kind of not the most effective way for you to have a lot of time because especially when you wait so long for games to pop you don't generally feel inclined to sit here staring at menus and forcing everyone else to wait around too um, so I'm gonna play as my favorite dude here um, you see here are your alliance abilities uh, you can choose a whole number of them 
I like to have Rush so far seems pretty useful. Um, most of the damage ones have seemed kind of okay. They do have some some favorites. They have sort of the Zonia's ring here. Um, and for the record, to any people watching, I, I make a lot of references to LOL uh, names, which is ironic considering that I was mostly a bigger fan of Han and Dota. Um, but I've just found that it, it, it's the largest market at the moment, and it's easier to target the masses. And I, I hate myself every time I reference that and names of things that are in all three games, and I pick LOL. But I mean, I guess more things have copied. I mean, the fact that we have summoner spells in general shows how many things want to copy the League of Legends model over, say, the Dota or the Han. Um, but that's that. So, you know, I'm not going to go through these in too heavy detail. Uh, there are skins for your armies, which is kind of cool. Uh, you could be fiery or black or whatever. And here's those accessory slots that I had. Um, you can see I tried to make a jungler character. Didn't go so well. Um, oh, and finally, here on the right, normally you would see that these have uh, players in them, and you can trade slots here. So this will determine not necessarily where you are laning, per se, but it's where your creeps are going to go. So if I'm here, I'm in mid lane, and I'm going to be facing off on creeps with whoever else is across me in mid lane. Uh, it works pretty well, and uh, what I like is that it does... It effectively does give you a way to determine what lane you're going to be in. You kind of decide with people at the start of the game what you're going to be in, and the and it, and it's that way because you have to trust that when you go to the lane, the person with you is going to actually give you effective creeps. So on some level, it you know maybe this is a chance for more trolling, but I think it might also just be incentive to do you know what you agree to do at the start. Could be a bonus. You know, only time will really tell. We got this nice, pretty little loading screen here. Um, does a little cinematic where a ship touches down, but then does nothing because instead laser beams send you over to the middle. And so here's the base. Um, you'll find some things familiar from uh, your traditional League of Legends UI, and a lot of the mechanics of League of Legends are represented here. Um, you have a a blue pill Focus button um, that you won't really see me able to use in base, but what's cool is you also have a teleport that has a cooldown um, that can only be used from base. So there's a little bit more back and forth and a little bit more speed at which that goes. Uh, I'm going to pick an ability. Abilities all work the same. Here are those summoner abilities, and what's interesting is everyone starts with a really pathetically useless, but still pretty uh, pretty decent ward. Um, it, it has a really small vision range, but it's on a cooldown instead of costing a resource, so you can kind of place it anywhere. Um, and it, you know, a very familiar mechanic with Dongate, which I think did that really well. Um, additionally, so here's the one of the crazy things: um, items have no place in this game, and your character strength is entirely based on experience and nothing else. As you level up, you'll gain experience um, that will give you both mastery points and attribute points. Attributes are spent in one of the six categories, and that's it. And they will increase your damage, your attack speed, your health, your armor, your mana, effectively, and your cooldown reduction. Um, and these have a hard cap of, uh, well, you see there, 8, 2, 4, 2, 0, 4. Those will increase as the game uh, goes gets longer. And also, various things you equip and choose can uh, increase those maxes. So you'll see uh, Masteries, a poorly chosen name again, Masteries are sort of like items that you unlock over time with experience um, because these have the larger set of effects. And these generally focus on a strategy rather than a pure stat. Um, for example, uh, always familiar from most of the games is the, the burning armor concept, radiance or you know, uh, sunfire cape. Um, this will give you more armor and you will deal damage, uh, magic damage in an area every few seconds. And so you can eventually, as you get mastery points, you can equip these in order to give yourself a big bonus. And there's a whole number of these, life steal, uh, you know, a critical damage type, carry, standard carry damage, slowing attacks, life on hit, um, armor shattering. I, the list goes on. They even have a cool, a couple of these cool tactical ones, like map control, which gives you um, a better sensor drone, I guess, and then um, and then gives you movement speed when out of combat. They have this chaser one that's <coughs> sorry about that. That is movement speed and recovery. 
Um, and a wave clear, I've never gotten to use this one, so I'm going to do it just for this demo, just to see what it looks like, that lets you deal damage to units, um, uh, like a group of units. It basically gives you a cleave, but it looks like a flat damage cleave. Um, so that could be interesting. Now, to move on, um, oh, and something that's cool, they do have this auto upgrade feature, so if you're not really sure what to do, these stats also can only be upgraded in base, and so if you're not sure what to do, you can click auto upgrade, and it will send, stay next time you're back at base, it'll upgrade with whatever points you have, so that you stay up to par. Now, so my lane is completely getting wrecked, which makes sense, because I haven't created any units. Um, there's also an auto army feature, but the way your army works is you have these categories, oh, it looks fairly familiar to um, what you'd expect from from like a classic RTS. You know, you have different categories that you click on and then those will unlock more things you can buy under them and there are prereqs with where you can go along. Uh, units are spent, are, are bought with resources and what they do is they produce units every wave. You'll see the wave counter here and your wave will include whatever units you've built. Not only that, units that you build um, give you a resource per wave that you see there under the uh, name. Never so, like many of the way. unit building tug of war games uh, common to StarCraft and <coughs> uh, Warcraft before it, uh, a lot of the resource management is about actually making use of your resources and using them effectively will allow you to send larger waves. Um, you'll notice, by the way, that, that the creeps have quite a lot of power. Um, something that's not exactly familiar to a player of the traditional MOBAs is that the creeps dish out a ton of damage as the game goes on in this. Um, and so you can't just ignore them as the same, especially because there are various types. They all have different armors and attacks, and some of them are air and can only attack ground, and some of them are ground and can only attack ground or air or whatever. Um, but what's cool is that there's this army overview. So I can go to this and I can see that my units are completely kicking ass um, because they hadn't been sending. I don't know why that said that, but now that it has updated, you'll see I have like a 50% strength overall relative to their wave. And it'll tell me that this is their most dangerous unit and here are the things that counter it. And so I can even click on these when I have enough money and it will just buy them. So great job, I would say, with adding in that tug of war mechanic but not forcing that starcraft level of expertise on all of your players that they tend to require because you have to know every type of unit and what they do so let's show that i can just oh, can i not click on there all right i might have lied it seems you can only do that from here um finally there's also uh of course you know ways to burn money if you have maxed out. Oh, and of, and of course there is a limit on the maximum amount of Understood. units you can have. Scanning Each thing costs targets. a certain amount of supply and you have a maximum of 50. You can also sell units if you don't like choices you've made earlier and want to switch up your strategy. Um, there's ultimately a whole lot of room for diversity of, of strategies through these units. There are then upgrades that affect the various classes of infantry, uh, vehicle, and air. I understand. Um, and they go from things to dam like damage to a bonus per each type of specific unit that you have. Um, and then there is a pure upgrade resource. So you can spend 125 to gain uh, 15 more resource per wave. Um, sort of an investment in the future. And finally an elite training that you can spend a flat out 1500 and send a really powerful wave if you need to make a big push. Um, and what I really like about this is that it it kind of it takes away from the need of of um, requiring you to have to manage two resources. Uh, League of Legends and Dota and Han, uh, your experience and your gold are very tightly coupled, but at the same time they're not the same. And so, how do you actually determine you know which one's more important and and make sure that you're doing that? Those games implement last hitting as a way to force you to manage both. This game uh, basically ignores last hitting in favor of allowing your, your hero to be based on one resource and your army to be based on another that are mostly untied together. That said, there are many ways to gain in uh, resource from waves, um, such as uh, 
you taking one of the summoner spells or the alliance abilities that allow you to gain resources, things die around you. Additionally, I believe that certain kills may provide resources, but I'm not 100% certain about that. Um, oh, and what you just saw me do there uh, was the auto army feature will, what it will do is it will give you, it will pick these suggested stuff, but the game will suggest things whether or not you do that. So even if you don't want auto army all the time, you can click on the little suggest button and it will do stuff for you. Which is really nice, again, to get you kind of into it. Um, so beyond that, some of the general mechanics of the game. We have bushes, much like in League of Legends. There are er these areas that, um, that will make you invisible when you're not you know, to anything that's not in them. You have jungle minions, um, these ones, these two big ones giving major bonuses on the map, and then some of the side ones giving things like these guys just give experience, but these ones over here will give you additional ability points when you kill them. Um, in fact, the, the ability points, or the attribute points, I guess, um, is a, another really cool way that it tracks your progress. You have levels, but levels don't really mean as much um, because the the stat difference in characters comes much more heavily from these attribute points and there are other sources of attribute points uh, no I believe escape. kills from units uh, from sorry from other commanders will actually give some bonus attribute points as well as from just leveling up and as I've said before the jungle minions also provide some amount of attribute points so that can create different levels of strength uh, on different players per team. Um, and what's cool is you can even see that the number of attribute points per team up on the top here. Um, it shows them so you have a very clear idea of who's stronger than who. So that, in a nutshell, is Supernova. Uh, the game does have some weaker and stronger heroes. Uh, I've played against some dudes who just were unkillable. And there seems to be, from some of the experts, a point at which uh, high damage dealers can just rip enemies to shreds, and I'm not entirely certain why, and I'd really like to find out. Um, but, you know, only time will really give me that understanding, and presumably balance is the easiest thing to, to fix long term. Uh, if you look at most of the MOBAs, basic balance is never really the primary concern or issue with any of them. It is you know, overall quality of design and um, Focus and, and core mechanics. And this one, I would say, has some pretty solid core mechanics and quality of design. Uh, it feels familiar, but really fresh at the same time. Um, the three-lane mechanic keeps it, you know, so that there isn't a ton you have to learn to get started. But the armies and the uh, stats, instead of the items, make it so that you're not feeling like you're just playing another clone. You have a little variety to the kinds of things you can do. I execute my orders. Um, and the strategies, therefore, become much more interesting for how you actually compete. And ultimately, it's, I mean, it's fun. It's got that fun factor so far. I have not had issues with, you know, the frustrations of an alpha game. It feels polished. It looks beautiful. I mean, you can look around and see that the, the graphics are just really solid. Um, they have a clear style to them without appearing, you know, too quirky in one way or another. I fight. Um, you don't have to deal with sort of that, you know, Dota looks pretty, but LOL, LOL has character, and, you know, some people think that LOL is too cartoony. I think this game strikes a pretty happy medium. Um, and. Yeah, that's that's the game in, in a nutshell. Uh, I hope that this game will. Scanning for targets. Towers are strong, by the way. Oh, that's another small fact. Towers uh, provide healing around them much slower than the central base, but kind of a nice little difference that uh, people may not be familiar with. Also, a pretty nice death recap. But yeah, so that's the game. Uh, hopefully they will be adding more people to the alpha soon, so I will be I able to actually play this. Um, but I wanted to do a, a first look so that everyone could get an idea of what they were expecting. I would highly recommend keeping an eye on this. Bandai Namco is a really solid company. 
they they really know what they're doing when it comes to mechanics. Um, Got on my little soapbox here, uh, but between you know the Tales games that have perfected JRPG combat and the uh, Japanese arcade fighting games um, between Gundam Extreme Versus and now on Steam a spiritual successor known as Rise of Incarnates. Um, I haven't gotten to play it much, but if it's anything like Gundam Extreme Versus, it will be the coolest thing you have ever played, um, and except in English, which is always nice. Um, and and so you know we've seen with Soul Calibur they also uh, a large part of their team was behind the the fighting in Super Smash Brothers series so they really know what it is they're doing when it comes to core mechanics and the feel of a game uh, so I have a lot of optimism with regards to this that I haven't had for any MMOs re or MMOs wow MOBAs recently so keep your eye on it and. Uh, Feel free to hit me up if you get into the alpha and you're looking for a game. Or um, find me on Twitter at uh, the doctor underscore x13 and uh, ask me, tell me what you think. Or find me on Facebook as I am also there. Um, either way, I hope to. Oh, I hope to kill this dude. I really want to. I really like to. Well, anyways. That's all for me. I am the doctor, and this has been Supernova. And I will see you all later. Activating additional powers. A perfect chance to hone my skills. I bring my blade. Fight. Focus and determination in battles. Facing me will greatly shorten their life expectancy. Hold. Recharging. Target squad. I understand. There is no escape. Weapon recharging. A perfect chance to hone my skills. No escape. Closer to perfection. Fight! Never stray from the way. Focus and determination win battles. There is no escape.
defeat. I understand. Welcome a challenge. Their the end fire. is at hand. Weapon recharging. Preparing Watch for battle. Their end is at hand. Understood. Scanning for targets. I must wait to recharge. Focus and determination win battles. Let's end this logical step. Fight! <laughs> Understood. Scanning for targets. Spot your weakness. Preparing for battle. Unto battle. Hold. Charging. I understand. Direction is clear. I understand. My systems have improved. I. Ex
execute my orders. received. Their end is at hand. Targets acquired. I welcome a challenge. Facing me will greatly shorten their life expectancy. My direction is clear. It's not time yet. Never stray from the way. Focus and determination win battles. Watch the fire. Their defeat is imminent. I bring my blade closer to perfection. My direction is clear. chance to hone my skills. Focus and determination win battles. So, this is my next approach. I understand. Systems have improved. Their end is at hand. There is no escape. Oh, recharging. received
never stray from the way. logical step. Focus and determination in battles. A challenge. On mission. To battle. Understood. Scanning for targets. They will be silenced. There is no escape. So, this is my next opponent. Their defeat is imminent. Death is but a minor setback. Let's end this quickly. A perfect chance to hold the skills. Hold. Be charging. There is no escape. experience. I bring my blade. Their defeat is imminent. Preparing for battle. No, no. 
not what they face. Carnage. Stay on mission. Targets acquired. I bring my blade. I was so close. Fight! Understood. Scanning for targets. I can spot your weakness. logical step. Their end is at hand. 